Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. I'm not sure if you guys ever seen the Blair Witch Project, but this is just giving me Blair Witch Project vibes. This eerie video comes from Creepy Outdoors on YouTube. I'll tag him below. And his channel focuses on ASMR-like content in the wooded areas of Canada. And he does this alone while listening out for the wildlife surrounding him. But this time, what he heard could not be mistaken for wildlife. But this is a good reminder why you should never hike alone. I'll let the rest of the clip play, but let me know, what would you do in this situation? Oh, hi. What the hell? I need to get out of here. Oh, boy. Ooh. Okay. That was creepy. I need to get out of here. It could have been campers. But this area is extremely secluded. I need to get back to camp. I would put my money on that's a camper out there and they saw this dude wandering around alone with his light and thought they'd mess with him. I only think this because that's exactly what I would do if I was in that situation. <laughs> I see you. It doesn't sound like something nefarious. It sounds like somebody's uh, just out there goofing off. There's something super freaky going on with fish right now that scientists cannot figure out. Back in November of 2023, scuba divers started noticing that a bunch of fish were doing behaviors they had never seen before, spinning and spinning and spinning, acting off balance, just spinning themselves literally to death. And then around January, a lot of these fish started washing up unalive in the shores of the Florida Keys, including an alarming amount of these endangered fish, the small tooth sawfish. People keep getting this on film and they are doing so much to investigate this problem and they've ruled out a bunch of stuff and they can't figure out what it is yet. They've actually been trying to get a $2 million budget approved in order to study this even further. They've been taking samples from the water and testing it for parasites. They've been testing different algaes that they think could be the culprit. They've looked at the water temperature, everything, but they still haven't figured it out. And what's even crazier is that on my FYP today, this is what got me down this rabbit hole, okay? There was a TikTok user posting their beta fish that was living in their home doing this and she's wondering what's wrong with her fish. So now not only is this happening in the ocean and the Florida Keys, this is affecting pets at people's homes. And unfortunately, it's not just happening in the Keys anymore either. They've spotted this as far north as Miami. Scientists will be continuing to study this situation and hopefully get a handle on it. But for now, it's really freaky. What is going on with the fish? I wonder if they're testing the actual fish themselves and not just the environment for anything that could be potentially causing this because this could be some new disease or virus or something that's spreading among fish. But it's a little bit scary to see them acting like this because it looks like it's something neurological. It's uh, kind of taking over and making them reenact the same motion or same movement over and over until they pass away. So that sounds like something in the brain and that scares me because that makes me think about prions and people eat a lot of fish. If there's something neurological that's going on with them that could bounce over to us could potentially be the next pandemic hopefully we figure out what's causing this pretty soon has anybody actually read the text of the TikTok bill that just got passed by congress there is some crazy stuff in here it's not just about foreign ownership they're actually trying to ban certain kinds of content it shall be unlawful for users to make videos in which they sit in the front seat of their car and cry about the price of fast food or talk about how rent costs too much, or complain that women only want to date tall men who have jobs. What is going on here? That's absolutely them trying to control speech, because you've got the right to sit in the front seat of your car and complain about how women only want tall men with jobs. <laughs> <laughs> but all joking aside, this looks to me like someone with an 8th grade education writing a bill. Absurd that they would put this kind of details into a bill. And how would they regulate that anyway? People are going to get online and complain. 99% of people who use the internet, that's all they use it for. Katie! No, I'm not Katie. Stop saying Katie. What are you talking about? You're talking to her? Hey, what are you doing? I'm not Katie. That's my girlfriend, Hannah, bro. I'm skipping you. <laughs> You're getting bro, what are you talking about, bro? That's literally my girlfriend. You know this guy? 
I, I don't know. Him. What do you do with this guy? I don't know him. You do know him. You really <laughs> don't know me. What do you? What does that even mean? You're saying that that's not you? That's not me. That's literally you. Right oh my gosh. Here. I've never seen this guy. You were literally just at my apartment an hour ago. You said you went to go get your nails done an hour ago. I did get my nails done. They're done. Wait, wait. She couldn't have been at your apartment an hour ago. You said you're in Texas. I'm in Tennessee. Do you not see that this is the same person in the picture? No, I see that, but that's also impossible if she was there an hour ago. Where, where is your girlfriend from? My girlfriend's from California. You're from California. I'm from California. <laughs> Did you ever get those papers back from the adoption place? You were adopted? Yeah. If it's not my girlfriend, bro, then I'm going to call her phone right now. And I'll hear it, yeah. What the fuck? Babe. What? Do you have a twin? No. What's your name? I'm Katie. Were you adopted in San Bernardino, California? Uh, yeah. Babe, I literally think that you guys are twins. We could be. You guys are literally spitting image. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a trip. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. I booked the flight. They're ready. The flight? Oh, does she like wear SPF 3000? Does she hate flowers? Uh, yep. Does your girlfriend know how to drive? <laughs> I wish we were twins. That's awesome. The chances of that happening is so slim. That's one of those things that you wouldn't believe if someone was just telling you about it without the video footage to back it up. But I love how they were trying to determine, like, how similar are they? Dude, can your girlfriend drive? Uh... <laughs> he didn't want to answer. <laughs> uh, that was great. Survive. <laughs> People need to stop skating so close to the road, man. That guy almost got creamed. Yeah, go to a skate park. Don't don't be skating on the sidewalks next to the road. That was stupid. Extremely close call. This thing from the American Red Cross. So people were noticing that when you go to try to give blood, they are asking this very important question. And the question is, have you ever had a coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine? And then it says down here at the bottom, if your answer is yes to this question, please call their 800 number before coming in to donate to determine if this will affect your eligibility. Why would they all of a sudden, why would there be some wiggle room around your uh, uh, eligibility if you've been vaccinated or not to donate blood? Well, you know the answer to that. I mean, I can speculate. I can deduce. But I'm just putting it out there for others who are so adamant to, you know, believe the narrative. I've got my own uh, ideas. I could speculate, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I think we all have the same idea rolling around up here. Hey, if you're enjoying this video and you like this kind of content, I make a new one just like it every single day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. So if you haven't seen, Chile is experiencing its worst wildfires in its history, almost like a certain island in America back in August. It's being reported that hundreds have presumably lost their lives and thousands are still missing and everyone's homes are being destroyed. Here's the interesting thing. In January of 2024, in the same exact area where the fires are happening, they had a smart city conference. And around the same time as these fires, the former president of Chile passed away in a helicopter crash where it's being reported that he was the one that was driving, although no reports are confirming it. And three of the other people that were on board were able to swim to shore, but he forgot to unfasten his seatbelt and he did not make it. But it's really interesting because just last year, the current president of Chile had said how he wants to turn the lithium mines, which mind you, Chile is the world's largest exporter of lithium, which is the main component for our phone batteries and rechargeable batteries for EV cars. And he wants to take those mines and take them away from corporations and make them state controlled mines, essentially giving the Chilean government full control over the export and import of lithium. Now here's the thing, they have to build these cities somewhere. They're not gonna just start from scratch, that would be dumb and way more expensive. It would not be cost effective. What would be easier, destroy what's already there and rebuild over top of it. Is that a horrible thing to do? Absolutely, but we know that these people are not good people and all they care about are their profit margins and how much money they can make and how much control they can have over you. Now granted, this is a horrible event, absolutely, but you cannot just ignore the fact that they just had a city conference in Chile in the same area as these fires happening. The former president suddenly passes away in a helicopter crash and then on top of that, last year, the current president wants to make their lithium, which is Chile's main export, the largest lithium mines in the world, 
state control. Here's the thing that I also don't get. The reports are saying that the weather from people that were there, from witnesses, are claiming that the weather was horrible, was abysmal. So anybody that knows how to fly, they have to take classes about safety. They know not to fly in bad weather, especially for a helicopter, because a helicopter is more prone to being destabilized in the air due to bad weather and high winds. And there's no official reports actually confirming who was driving or even where it was going. It's all speculative. So at this point, I think we should just start like a bingo card of all the major cities that we think that this is going to happen to and just see if we can fill out a bingo card by the end of 2024 because I think it's probably a high possibility. This is starting to sound very familiar. This It sounds like he might as well be talking about Hawaii, like all the similarities and everything, the way it lines up. There's definitely something, I think, to this whole smart city conspiracy theory that's going around. I think that they're intentionally destroying these places so that they can build them back up to be this new smart city because no one would agree to go along with it you've got to force this change because no one wants it in 1980 in canada a guy named granger taylor left a note saying he was leaving with aliens he was never seen or heard from again and this story gets even weirder than that so granger taylor pictured here who was 32 at the time of his disappearance was considered a mechanical genius. He refurbished a train. He made his own airplane based on a picture he saw. He even took a couple old satellite dishes and made his own UFO fort. Now Granger talked for years about having vivid dreams where aliens came to visit him. And in his dreams, the extraterrestrials told him they wanted him to come with them. And that when they came to get him, the time would be when there would be a storm so nobody could see their massive spaceship. And that coincidentally happened on the day he went missing. Now Granger told people all over his small town in Canada that he was leaving with the aliens weeks before his disappearance. So how he knew there was gonna be some major thunderstorm that night is beyond me. And on the day he disappeared, he left a note for his parents. Here's that note. Let me read part of it to you. Dear mother and father, I have gone away to walk aboard an alien spaceship. As reoccurring dreams assured a 42 month interstellar voyage to explore the vast universe, then return. You know when he first disappeared, nobody looked for him because they believed him. But Granger Taylor has never been seen or heard from since, and he left no evidence behind as to how he went missing. There's a short episode about Granger Taylor on Paramount Plus's Never Seen Again. It's pretty good. It's worth the watch. This is one strange story. Maybe he did really go away with aliens. What do you think happened to Granger Taylor, Booskies? Let me know in the comment section. Shabadoo! I don't really have any theories on what happened to this guy. I guess my best guess would be that he just had some sort of a psychological problem and disappeared, wandered off, and probably met his demise somewhere, and that's why they've never found him. Yeah, I feel like this will be one of those stories that'll be wrapped up one day with uh, them finding his remains and then coming to the conclusion that, you know, he wandered off and passed away during this exact time frame that he was supposedly leaving on this alien ship. But I thought this was interesting. I love a good missing persons case. Not a lot to go off on this one other than the guy was saying a bunch of stuff that sounds like nonsense and apparently everybody in town believed him <laughs> but we'll probably never know I was watching this video online this morning of these they call them nuclear veterans mm, the atomic soldiers the atomic soldiers mm -hmm. these kids were like 18 19 yeah. years old they put them on ships and they mm -hmm. put them out where they drop nukes they told them mm -hmm. turn around just don't look at the flash cover your face like this face the other way and these people said they could see the x-rays of their hands through through their closed eyes when the flash came through and they had to deal with their children were born with like crazy diseases that they were like dying early and stuff that's on par with some of this shit we had the nuremberg trials we had the doctor's trial you know to set the gold standard of what can never be done to a human and then we turned around and did many of those same things the atomic energy commission absolutely did i mean this is on the record now in the name of you know we must prevent nuclear world war three there you go so and but if 
if it does happen, we have to know how it's going to affect people. I mean, the atomic soldiers, there were those on ships, and there were also those in the desert in Nevada when we were setting off bombs because they wanted to see how they, being the Defense Department, wanted to see how soldiers would perform in nuclear battle. They wanted to see how they would perform physically and also psychologically. This doesn't surprise me to hear that this actually took place. The U.S. government has experimented on their soldiers. It, it's been going on for forever. When you sign up the military here in the United States, they own you. You're no longer your own individual self. You're a property of the U.S. government. So they they treat you like property. They do whatever they want to you. And this stuff comes out all the time. These unredacted papers get released from the CIA or from the FBI showing all these experiments that were done on soldiers or that they were thrown intentionally into harm's way because they just wanted to see what happened. <laughs> it happens all the time. Evening godless sodomite. Kneel before your god, Babylon! Making me the highest paid megalomaniacal boy king in all of Babylon! You see, if you go and visit the very home of the Oscars, where they hold it each year, you can see a plaque on the wall that says, The Babylonian Courts. The camera shows you the stage, and you see an unmistakable Tower of Babel embedded into the design. Outside of the Kodak Theater, you have the gates to Ishtar, and you have Babylonian gods put on the outside of the gates. They have the exact elephants. They have the same exact gate of Ishtar. They have the same exact Babylonian gods over the top of the gates. A lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. He did so all I can say is, suck it, Jesus, this award is my God now! I'm thankful to the Oscar gods. The other names of the gentlemen are all gods as far as a, as far as a category concerned. When you get this little golden statue, you become a star. In the Egyptian culture, they also had a little statue that represented the god Ptah. And see, when an Egyptian king died, it was believed that his spirit went into the belt of Orion, and he then became a star. Up until 1999, the Oscars was held at a building called The Shrine, which was founded by William Florence and Walter Fleming, two high-ranking Scottish Rite Freemasons. Hollywood has long been interested in Freemasonry. Gene Autry, John Wayne, Nat King Cole, Duke Ellington, C.C. DeMille, Clark Gable, Walt Disney, Oliver Hardy, you name it, the list goes on. Many celebrities have come out and admitted their connection to Freemasonry. You can see the checkered floor. You can see the archways. You can see the sun motif in the background. All of these are letting you know exactly who owns this organization. While the world is wandering after all of these celebrities, we would do well to heed the very advice from Jesus' lips himself. In Luke 4 verse 8 it says, For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. I find it absolutely fascinating how they intentionally put this visual representations of this stuff right out there in the open for people to see. But because we're not familiar with this stuff, because we don't study the, these occult things like they do, we don't even recognize it. And it just looks like decor. It just looks like they're just uh, making it look fancy. So it's interesting to me, the more I find out, the more I start seeing this symbolism in everyday places. I get I got goosebumps on my arms talking about this because it's just crazy because I believe it who drove a being called a creature or being or they called it kind of et on that ufo crash case in virginia brazil in 1996 and i said to him you have a level of confirmation that only a handful of people on this planet have what does that feel like because i wanted to know you know, he's got was serious as a heart attack and he was not out there trying to get an interview with anybody. We were chased him down for years mm -hmm. and it was like all the money in the world and never coming forward and the stars lined up and we had like a 36 hour window where we managed to get this guy on camera. But I asked him that question. You have a level of confirmation. You know, definitively, you drove this thing around. What does that feel like? 
and he he responded like it was more of a burden than anything else mm. and it's actually kind of ruined his life the level of secrecy he gets phone calls from the base that ask him like hey how you doing how's your family doing you guys having a good time did mm. you did you move yet or are you still in the same spot right yeah, you're still in the same spot great great well, i'm glad your family's doing good i'm glad you're you're doing good you know any change of plans you you know let us know that those kind of calls he gets all the time the virginia brazil ufo incident is in my opinion the most fascinating ufo story heavily documented there's a lot of eyewitnesses there's a lot of eyewitness interviews and stuff on the internet the story of that incident encompasses such a large swath of people in such a small area that all have the same story all their details line up you had people that died during the incident you get people who didn't even meet each other or don't even know each other who interacted with the with the beings that give the same description of what they look like of this strong stench and stuff that they had about them the guy that was there i'm sure i'm messing up his name i think it's james fox but he has a documentary that he put out last year that i believe is on netflix about this virginia brazil incident and it's one of the most compelling ufo documentaries i've ever seen hands down i highly suggest everyone go check it out the rothschilds more specifically lord jacob rothschild recently passed away on february 26 at the age of 87. just hearing that name rothschild might make some people think oh evil rich illuminati corrupt new world order freemason but do you even know who they are and how they made their money they started off as a relatively normal family just trying to make ends meet and grow a business almost 300 years ago with amschel moses bauer opening a counting house in frankfurt germany in 1743, the early version of an accounting firm. Above the door outside his office was a sign with an eagle and a red shield on it. And the office came to be locally known as the Red Shield Firm, translated to German, Rote Shield, which eventually got shortened to Rothschild. Origin story right here. Amschel passes business down to his son, Meyer, who changed his last name from Bauer to Rothschild after the store. And this is where it all begins. Meyer was pretty business savvy and just hungry to make it big, so he wanted to scale hard. His dad's business mainly dealt with bookkeeping, dealing coins, and lending lending money to average Joes. Until one time he scored a lending job with the government and got paid a fat bag for it. So he doubled down on that, focusing all of his efforts on lending money to governments and kings, which was way more profitable than lending to citizens. The loan amounts were astronomically bigger than average folk for obvious reasons. But the real cherry on top was that these loans were secured by the people, the taxpayers of the country. So when a regular Joe takes out a loan and can't pay it in time, they default on it and the loaner is left chasing after Joe until they can pay it back. Government loans are backed by taxpayer money. A government will always have a virtually endless supply of money rolling in from collected taxes that they can use to pay off their loans. So they can just raise taxes in their country to get more money if they're ever a little short on paying off a loan. In this sense, governments can never lose, and neither do people who loan them money. You always hear of governments in debt trillions of dollars and might be asking yourself, in debt to who? That would be to central banks, who arguably modeled this structure of nonstop government loaning from the original Rothschild firm. A bit of an infinite money glitch that won't end well for us. My saw big bucks flowing in from this business model, so he taught his five sons his methods and sent them on an expedition across Europe. To Germany, England, France, Austria, and Italy to set up similar counting houses in each. Rinse and repeat. They quickly rose to power and became the richest bankers in each country, having more money than all other banks in those countries combined. Clearly, this strategy was working beautifully. At the time, one business owning banks in multiple different countries was unheard of, and they definitely made the most of it. Doing sh like funding both sides of the war and Napoleon's conquest, which is no secret. Meaning they probably did the same for the world wars and uh, even conflicts happening today. They helped Brazil pay for its liberation from Portugal, saved the Bank of England from collapse by bailing them out. Just imagine being so rich that the most powerful country in the world at the time comes asking you for money. Pretty much funded the industrialization of America, which was a barren land of cowboys, log cabins, and natives at the time, and also helped Britain buy the Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean. When Britain issued the Balfour Declaration in 1917, announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people, you know, Israel. It was addressed to Lionel Walter Rothschild, who also helped fund this move. So what's their secret? How do they keep this generational wealth growing so steadily over the centuries? Well, when Meyer, the OG businessman behind the government loans, passed away, he outlined a very specific system in his will, in which the wealth can only get passed down the male line of lineage, meaning females who married outside the family were completely left out of the money. I think you know where this is going. Because of this rule in his will, all future descendants had a tendency to marry within the family, mostly their second or even 
even first cousins and the occasional niece. And that's exactly how they kept it within the family to this day. It's speculated that a Rothschild may actually be the real richest person in the world, counting in the trillions, using intentional tricks of the trade, like asset hiding, trust funds, and shell companies to hide their true wealth. So while everyone's focused on Musk versus Bezos battling it out head to head for the richest person title, the real top dog is quietly sitting in the shadows, tapping their fingers together, thinking of their next move. That was a great breakdown. I love that guy's videos. They're very informative. But you see this, it kind of brings to light how these guys have their hands in all these politicians' pockets. If that's who you go to to bail you out in times of need when you've messed up really bad and need money, then you're not going to do anything to piss that person off, including making laws they don't like. So if they want things done a certain way, a certain law passed, or a certain rule to be on the books, all they've got to do is say, hey, this is what we want. These politicians and stuff will bend over backwards to make it happen because it's in their best interest, not in the best interest of the United States or of its people, but in their best interest. But y'all don't need me giving you a speech on something that's common sense. So we'll go ahead and end the video there. I hope you guys come back tomorrow for the next video. I'll have another one up just like I always do. I hope everybody has a great, safe, fantastic rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you tomorrow.